Hi, this is Bruce. Whoa, bright, sunshiny day. <laughs> um, you know, people have been ask, actually asking me if I would do a video about preparing your beehives for overwintering. You're in Florida. Man, is that a thing? <laughs> if you do any research on the computer, look at overwintering, in, in, uh, overwintering your bees and you'll see a whole bunch of things our, our brothers up north are doing. They are wrapping their beehives in tar paper. They're making sure that they have a top entrance so that the snow doesn't cover the bottom entrance and suffocate their bees. There is a whole slew of things that they're doing up north to prepare to let their bees make it through the winter time. Here in Florida, it's a little different. All right, today, today is the 3rd of December, 2021, and it's just about 80 degrees out here. All right, so do you have to prepare for the winter here in Florida? Yeah, yeah, you actually kind of do. Um, there's a couple of things you should do, okay? How, what is the winter here in Florida? Florida's got three separate temperature bands, and right here in central Florida where I am, this is considered to be subtropical, all right? Um, that means that right now it's 80 degrees in December, Typically, now when we're talking about weather, things change, but typically around the first week of February, we'll have maybe four, five, six days of freezing weather. So we'll have weather, it might get to 28 degrees, it might be at 30 degrees, it might kill my little plants in the yard if I'm not careful, but we'll have just a few days of winter. But leading up to it, we'll have odd days. We'll have a day where it might be 80 and then the night it'll be down in the low, in the 50s that makes the bees a little bit confused as to what they should be doing okay the queen if she thinks it's getting cold she'll slow down on laying eggs and she'll slow down on brood production if it's chilly outside they'll kick the drones on out but then you get a couple of days of warm weather and so next thing you know the queen's laying drone brood you know another brood our queens actually lay all year long they don't actually stop entirely they do slow down um, but drones in the winter time yeah yeah I have a good friend that is a uh, queen breeder and he's very proud that for the last couple of years running he's had Christmas Queens right he's actually grafted Queens or grafted Queens and had them go out on their mating flight right around Christmas time in December and get mated and come back ready to lay eggs <laughs> That's pretty cool. I went through my hives this morning and I, I saw a few drones, not as many as usual, but I see drone brood in there. You never know with these queens. So what do we have to do here in Florida to get ready for the winter time? Well, there's a few things. We have plants that bloom all year long, but they sometimes they'll, they'll stop and go and there'll be, there'll be like mini dearths throughout the winter time. So, you pay close attention to your bees. If they're hungry, you may have to feed them, right? No big deal, right? What you do is you look at the weather forecast for the week for like a five day forecast. And if it doesn't look like you're gonna get into freezing temperatures, you can feed them liquid feed just like you would anytime there's a dearth. If you're, you look at your weather forecast and you see freezing temperatures, then you're going to want to make it dry food. You know, I usually, I usually like to put like a, a one of those small size paper plates and put uh, just dry sugar on it, just regular sugar. And moisture tends to get absorbed into the sugar and it'll, it'll kind of harden up after a little while. And the bees will take it. They don't like it as well. If you have really strong 80 degree weather they'll they'll grab it a green at a time and take it out and throw it outside the hive but they'll they'll get what they need from it if they're hungry okay all right what else with these mini dearths that we sometimes have robbing can be a concern so that means you might consider a robbing screen but definitely what you want to do 
is reduce your entrances on your hives. If you're using one of the store-bought entrance reducers, you're going to want to um, you're going to want to put that into the smallest opening for them. Okay, that, that's fine. That'll help. That'll keep them a little bit warmer from drafts, and it will also it'll also um, produce reduce uh, the robbing because they'll have they'll be able to defend a smaller opening better. Hmm. <laughs> Tongue tied. Um, other things you can do. All right. I used to put a bat of foam on my 10 frame hives. I'd put it between the inner cover and the outer telescoping cover. I don't really do that anymore. I, I thought it was helping for a long time, but I, I would find that I'd get a lot of bull ants up in there, you know, up in the top between the inner cover and outer cover. And I, I don't think it's necessary. Now I have been slowly transitioning more and more into the um, into solid bottom boards rather than screen bottom boards, but I do have a few screen bottom boards. So what I'll typically do is I'll tuck some, you know, something between the screen and then the uh, the lower sticky board, so that uh, that'll block off any wind that might blow up in there. But remember, bees they survive in much much colder temperatures than than what we have here in Florida. So these are the things. Another thing, you want to monitor your mite counts. Check your mite counts and if you need to treat, this is a good time to treat for mites. All right. So this is just a real short and sweet one. I hope this helps out and I hope you enjoyed it. So this is Bruce in cold wintertime Florida. All right, see you next time.